from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, July the 2nd, 2018. We open with two breaches of the Gaza security fence into Israel. Today, four Palestinians broke through the fence and tried to set fire to an empty IDF sniper's post. Israeli troops chased after the infiltrators and said they heard shots being fired at them. The troops then opened fire at the infiltrators, killing one of them and critically injuring another who was evacuated on an IDF helicopter to an Israeli hospital for treatment. He was now said to be in moderate condition. A third was injured and ran back into Gaza where he was treated, and the fourth was apprehended and handed over to Israeli security forces for questioning. Yesterday, a similar incident of a group of Palestinians who broke through the fence and set fire to an empty IDF post and then fled back into Gaza. Meanwhile, Palestinians in Gaza are also continuing to send incendiary kites and balloons over the border fence, sparking some 20 fires today in Israeli territory, including a massive brush fire that firefighters have been battling for hours. A first-of-its-kind joint statement on combating anti-Semitism was delivered to the United Nations Human Rights Council's 38th session in Geneva today. It addresses the rise of anti-Semitic hatred and violence, stating that anti-Semitism is not the problem of Jewish communities alone, but an affront against humanity. The statement was delivered by Hungary on behalf of 21 other countries as co-sponsors. The World Jewish Congress helped initiate and promote the statement. CEO and Executive Vice President Robert Singer said it is gratifying to see this very real problem finally being addressed with the vigor it deserves at this council and deeply encouraging to note the concrete steps proposed to tackle this issue, including, he said, education, legislation, dialogue and cultural and religious preservation. Australia announced that it was stopping its direct funding of the Palestinian Authority because of concerns that the money could be used in the monthly stipends awarded to Palestinian terrorists and their families. Australian Foreign Minister Julie Bishop said any assistance provided, quote, to those convicted of politically motivated violence is an affront to Australian values and undermines the prospect of meaningful peace between Israel and the Palestinians. Bishop said Australia remains committed, though, to helping Palestinians with basic services like health care, food and water. And she said the monies will now go through the United Nations Humanitarian Fund for the Palestinian territories, much of which will be spent in Gaza. Three months ago, if you recall, Congress passed the Taylor Force Act, which included a halt to funding to the PA, as long as it continued the terrorist stipend practice, except for monies to be used for water access, child vaccinations, and similar services. A Jewish-American BDS activist was denied entry into Israel yesterday because of her support for a boycott of the country. 43-year-old Ariel Gold is the national co-director of the U.S. left-wing activist group Code Pink and an advocate of the boycott, divestment and sanctions movement, which seeks to delegitimize the state of Israel. She said she had arranged for a visa in advance, but after landing at Ben-Gurion, was told she was being sent back to the U.S. Israeli Strategic Affairs Minister Gilad Erdan wrote in Hebrew on his Twitter account, Our policy is clear. Those who campaign towards boycotting Israel and come here in order to cause harm won't be allowed to enter the country. The rules have changed and Israel will not show restraint towards those who try to hurt it. Israel has launched a campaign in the Golan Heights asking for Israeli residents to pitch in and do what they can for the Syrians seeking shelter in the Syrian Golan. Donations of clothing and toys for children for the tens of thousands of displaced Syrians seeking refuge from attacks by Syrian government forces are being collected. As we reported to you on Friday, the IDF conducted a nighttime operation Thursday night delivering tons of humanitarian aid to the Syrian Golan. And Friday night, the IDF brought six wounded Syrian nationals, four of them children, into Israel for treatment in a local hospital in what they called a, quote, unique and complex 
medical operation. Today, Eli Malka, who leads the Golan Regional Council, hopes that Israel civilians will keep the goodwill gestures going. Malka ordered the opening of a collection center for supplementary equipment to let the refugees, he said, live in a humane way. Well, the Jerusalem Light Festival is underway this week. The annual celebration includes over 35 light installations created by local and international artists. Highlights include alternating projections on the Damascus Gate and other structures and 3D displays within the Old City. This year's theme is togetherness, with lights displayed in all quarters of the Old City, Jewish, Muslim, Christian, and Armenian. Artistic director Gaston Zar said the festival brings people together and to areas of the Old City they may not normally visit. The festival is now in its 10th year. It runs through this Thursday. And taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Monday, July the 2nd at 7 o'clock is The Wisdom of Dr. Ruth. At 7.30, a look at the life and music of Irving Berlin. At 8, historian David Kaufman talks about the reasons Jews settled and thrived in New York City. That's from Limud, New York, 2018. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with historians Deborah Dashmore and Jeffrey Gurak on the history of New York City and of the Jews of New York. And at 10, two world-renowned chefs and bloggers, Deb Perlman and David Leibovitz, speak at the 92nd Street Y in New York City. And coming up right after this newscast tonight at 6.30, it's the ILTV debate program, Frenemies. And that's the JBS News update for Monday, July the 2nd, 2018. I'm Tisha Bader.